So we'll, we'll start off real quick with a, the creating of a new program and then just kind of throwing some positions in there real quick. Uh, so to like get to where your programs are located at, you hit the select button. And so from here you can see programs. Uh, to go ahead and just create a new program, you hit create. And then you can just give it a custom name. There's some names that you can use down here at the bo bottom, like style, program, all, job, whatever. Job, whatever. Um, and there, so this says words. Notice if you scroll down here, this changes to letters. And you can like manually punch these in. Uh, on older robots, that's the only option you have. On the newer robots, now you can do this options thing. But yeah, there should be an option for a keyboard here and then it'll bring up a digital keyboard where you can then plug in the information. So I'm just gonna choose a generic name for right now to uh, start this program. Job, enter. And also too, like it's very good practice to always have like a job number. Oh, I could have done it like this actually. So I'm gonna hit previous. I'll sit in the previous key to go back and then kind of go, you can navigate with your cursor. Uh, in RoboGuide, we're using the uh, arrow keypad, but in on the Teach Minute, you can do the same here as well with this arrow keypad. One advantage to like utilizing RoboGuide is you can use your your keyboard for some of your functionality. Like actually, if I'm not mistaken, I can like if I want to call this job one. Yeah, so I can just press the number key on on my keyboard to uh, be able to use numbers and letters. That's maybe that's why it's not giving me the keyboard option. But so we call this thing job one. This is good practice to give thing a job number. So that way, at least there's some type of uh, segregation, and you can keep using the same word job, job one, job two, job three. Uh, jobs are also utilized in program selection, right? So this is model number one of the part, this is model number two of the part, model number three of the part. Or jobs can also be used like this is process number one, this is process number two, this is process number three. Uh, and so each one of those things are called as a, as a job. But depending on like what sector of what industries you work in, this might be called something different. It might be program number one, program number two, program number three, or recipe number one, recipe number two, recipe number three. You'll just kind of see just some different programming conventions. So if you see something like that, that's probably what you're looking at. You're looking at different uh, model numbers of a uh, part being ran or different processes inside of an operation. Enter, enter, end. All right, so now we have our first program that's officially here. I'll kind of just run through and create some points. Whenever creating a point, you have different point options. Also, depending on what type of robot you have, you may see other options that are here for like, uh, for example, uh, for welding robots, they have a package in them which will give you a, a C type of weld, a circle weld, or an arc weld. These different points will change the way the robot moves. So with the J, that stands for a joint position. With an L, that stands for a linear position. Okay, so one thing a joint position will do, a joint position will get to a point as fast as the robot can get to the point. And so the robot doesn't care how it gets to the point. A linear point, the robot will move in a, a perfectly straight line to that point. So uh, a perfect example of this is like, if you had this here, and let's say for instance, this was uh, the, the, the robot would need to move from this point right here to this point right here. Robot moves from this point to this point. A linear move, the robot will move directly along this line to get to that point. A joint move will move like this because it's faster for the robot to move all of its joints in like that arcing motion to get to this point than it is to move in a linear motion to get to that point. So one important thing to keep in mind when going to using a joint position versus a linear position is a joint position could potentially cause a crash. And what I say that is like, let's pretend you had a pillar right here, right? If there's a pillar right here, well, if you record in a linear position, you're just gonna you're just gonna slide right past and uh, kind of don't have two hands, but you're gonna slide just in this one direction right here, yeah. right? So you don't have to worry about the robot traveling anywhere. But if you're if you're doing a joint move, it'll come out here a little bit. The next big thing to keep in mind is when you're doing a joint move, the arcing will be larger based on the speed of the robot. So the faster you move the robot, the bigger the arc will be. So if you said robot move at 10% speed, I'll put the bottle down. At 10% speed, maybe the robot just arcs like this. And maybe it looks very linear. It doesn't even look like it's, it'll just kind of travel over here. But you bump it up to 50% and it's gonna go like this. You bump it up to 75%, it's gonna go like this. You bump it up to 100%, it's gonna go like this. Joint speed, it will go from this point to this point as quick as it can. So a uh, point being with this, and, and the reason why this is super important is because, let's say for instance you wrote a program, you ran the program at 10% speed, and you're like, 
yeah, everything's good. Then you go and you run at 100% speed and it just plows through something. Cause you're like, oh wow. Like, cause like it, it increased the arc of its movement. And so now its pathing is different. Also stop distances will change as well. Stop distances meaning when you're traveling from here to here, what is the speed of its deceleration, right?